we're going to talk about a lot of things with my next two guests. One is the CEO and founder of Jamestown Music. He's a Grammy-nominated Billboard Music Art Award artist, two-time Stellar Award artist, J.J. Harrison, and Youthful Praise, going to their first ever number one Billboard top uh, gospel airplay chart hit with their single, You Deserve It, in 2017. He's joined on the show today with his wife to discuss their book, A Miracle Marriage, I Forgive You, I Trust You, I Believe You, Volume 1. They state that marriage is sacred. Marriage is powerful. But marriage has also been under attack for quite some time. So on Money Making Conversations today, we will discuss these things I mentioned and many more things. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, J.J. and Trina Hairston. Hey, Rashad, how are you? Pretty good, my friend. Pretty good. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm always glad to be on. Well, uh, uh, Trina, you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, as you saw, I, I made some comments about myself and uh, the family. And uh, and a lot of people, when uh, you, I'm talking to two entrepreneurs here, small business owners, people who are living their dreams and their dreams are being put in place through their goal setting and their consistency. Where is, put in perspective before we actually get into into the book, the role of the family and uh, in, in, its, in your role of being successful as entrepreneurs? Well, we, we honestly believe that your family comes first. We believe family is your first ministry. And I often say that God does things in order. He's not going to bless you with this, you know, family, this wife, these children, and then expect you to put them to the side so that you can build a career um, outside of the home. But we believe that God does things in order so that if you build your home and you do it in the correct way, honoring your wife and teaching mm-hmm. your children the principles of God, that he will set things in line for you when it comes to your career and the things that you, the people that you need to meet, the people that you need to connect with. All of that for us comes together when you put your marriage and your family first. Because God is, a, we believe God is a God of order. So, in in doing so, um, if you if you read our book, and I believe you have, and maybe someone else <laughs> out there has read it, um, when things were not in order in our household, uh, things were not in order for neither one of our careers. Uh, we didn't know what we wanted to do, and even the things that we did desire to do just didn't seem to come together the way we needed them to come together. Um, But it wasn't until we decided that we were going to put our family first. Um, Mm -hmm. JJ had made a decision that he was going to um, get his family back together at at whatever cost that meant, whether it meant um, having to start all over career-wise or whatever it meant. He was determined to put his family back together. And once he did that, believe it or not, um, what he started hearing from God started changing. The music that he started hearing and his conversation and his relationship with God started to change. And as a result of that, um, you see the J.J. that you have today. That is the Grammy-nominated and the stellar winner, <laughs> um, and that's traveling all over the country. That did not happen until we got our family together. Uh, J.J., your turn. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean <laughs> my wife always says it so perfectly. Um, I, you know, we we initially, and, and this probably um, you can attest to this as well, Sean. Mm-hmm. Um, we we got married before yes. um, things really happened for us, mm-hmm. and before we started, we weren't even thinking about starting businesses and all that. We just got married, and um, we were still making music and everything while we were while we were uh, married. And like my wife said. You know, we had gotten some moderate success, but things didn't change for us until our 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 family was in order, our home was in order. Then we were actually clear in our minds. We were clear in our hearts. There was not there, there was no hindrance between us and God, and, and He was able to give us different visions, different dreams, different ideas that have exploded on us and and really put put, put us in another place. So. Um, we always say family first, home first. God is not going to trust you to be a blessing to the world if he can't even trust you with your house. Absolutely. Uh, it was really, uh, when I was reading the book, it was, uh, you know, the book is about Trina's truth 
and J.J.'s journey. It's, 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 it's sectioned out throughout the book like that. And one of the things, yeah. uh, and we're going to go through different sections of the book, and I'm not going to, first of all, it's a motivating book. Let me just tell you, it's an uplifting book. This is not a sad wow. book. This is not, this is not a testimony about what we did wrong. It's about, a, about information about what you can do right and using their life as an example, which is very powerful because a lot of people don't want to reveal any um, missteps in their life because they're, 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 that's the shallow life that we live. You know, I want to be perfect. Right. I want to live a life that uh, does, doesn't have ex- any negative moments. But that's not truth. Those are not truths. Right. And that's, this book is about truths. And what, what, what continually came out in each chapter I read was they set examples up. They go into the faith. They go into the Bible and show examples of why this happened, with, why Jesus turned water into wine, at, which was at a marriage ceremony that he was invited to. And he didn't, he didn't. Right. And so these are all important things. And so I like it because of the fact that, you know, you know when you walk away from something you, and you learn something, I learned from this book. And so I want to point this out. So I'm going to have wow. a good time with this book. I'm, I'm upbeat. Wow. Rashawn McDonald's upbeat. You know, I, I walked wow. away. I walked away going, yeah, I can't wait for this interview. I got all these posters. We're going to talk. And uh, <laughs> because, you know, you know, my natural background, I'm, a, I'm an uplifting guy. And so it was one section of the book called um, Cell Phones and Passwords. <laughs> where oh god cell phones and password if you like I, I can put my phone down anywhere in my house and my, my wife can pick up my phone and she she asked me what's your password i'd give it to her so many people make right. mistake with the two phones I, i've never had two phones in my life first of all okay i have one phone one phone number i never understand the two phone system secondly if 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 you put your phone down and anybody that you love a dating, a fiance, a wife goes towards your phone and you dive into the phone, then you got a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, right. you got a problem that's because right. you got to be honest on all levels. And that's all you're saying in this book. And using the example of cell phones and password is a great example for, from the, for the common folk. We know how we're tied to that technology. And this technology yes. can be a barrier to getting your family right, to getting your relationship on point. Correct. Right. That's so true. I don't I never understood why in two thousand nineteen we are still using cell phones or any kind of electronic device to hide stuff because as we know with computers, they can be great, but they also can be a curse. They can ruin your life. They will tell every piece about you that you don't want if if you pick up someone's cell phone these days, it's almost like a diary into their life. <laughs> yes. Um so mm-hmm. You got to be an open book and, and you have to be very transparent mm-hmm. with your spouse about everything because, mm-hmm. like you say, it's only going to take a crack of a cell phone um, for them to open up and see what you've been doing on your off time. Yes. Yes. And, and for me, that, that, that was part of our rebuilding process the yes. fact that we were able to be as transparent. Like, we, there's nothing, there's no. Um, there's no site, there's no um, page, <laughs> yes. there's no code that my wife does not have for me. Absolutely. Because we need to be able to be open with each other. There's, and the thing is, she doesn't even have to look. She doesn't even care to look because she knows she knows everything. But if there was something that I kept a secret, then she'd want to look. Absolutely. So and that's we, the key. We, we're that's just open and transparent with each other. That's the key. And, and, I'm uh, talking to uh, my man, J.J., and his wonderful wife, Trina. That's J.J. and Trina Hashton. We're talking about their book, The Miracle Marriage. I forgive you. I trust you. I believe you. Volume one. So you know there are many more. We're going to come back and talk about that, talk about their production company, talk about all the projects, the new album, all those things coming up. But I just wanted to kick this first part off with the book that everybody should buy. Everybody should have in their uh, relationship closet. In your relationship box. Rashad McDonald, we're back with more Money Making Conversation. Hi, this is Rashad McDonald, and I am the host of Money Making Conversations. We're on the phone talking to uh, Trina and uh, J.J. Harrison. I reversed this time. I've been saying J.J. and Trina Harrison. I'm giving her that respect, you know. That I can flip it like that. And I, I have to use myself as an example of a person who had who lived a flawed life because of the fact that I didn't understand the balance of family. I was so focused on reaching my dreams and my goals, uh, reaching my goals through, that would achieve through my dreams, my dreams. And I'm, I am a goal-oriented person. I'm a multitasking person. I get up at the same time every day. I am a person who is focused. What I was not focused on was my family. And when I read this book uh, that they wrote, a Miracle Marriage, uh, I Forgive You, I Trust You, I Believe You, Volume 1. 
it opened my eyes to I am fixing uh, some of the issues that I have. I have fixed a lot of the issues that I have that the book discuss. But more importantly, it opened my eyes, and that's important. And I'm, 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 and I'm, and I'm, uh, and I'm accepting of the information that the book is providing to me. Um, when we talk about the word divorce, and in the in the book, uh, Trina, you talk about uh, when JJ asked for a divorce. And um, JJ, talk about that moment because I want to talk about my moment, so so people can understand how sometimes when you given the okay, it really opens your mind to say, "Wait a minute." She said no. yes. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It's for real now. And so yeah, it, if right. and if we allow ourselves to uh, just just hear the word yes, and then 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 take that moment to say. Where do I stand with my options besides what's standing in front of me that said yes? What's better for right. me than what's standing in front of me? Just stand there. Don't just run out the door. She said yes. Okay, okay, now. Okay, hold up now. Don't, don't run out that door now. She said right. yes. <laughs> and that's what you basically, uh, there's an example of what happened to you, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing about my wife was when we initially talked about divorce, when I brought up divorce, she she never was in favor of it, but she said, "I'm not stopping you from doing anything. Yes. You want to you want a divorce? Go ahead and file. Go ahead and get it done." <laughs> yes, I could I could not do it. Yes, and there's something inside of me that told me that she was my wife for the rest of my life. And there, honestly, there was a lot more pressure from the outside, from other people, trying to get me to divorce my wife as opposed to how I really felt. Um, but when she said, okay, go ahead and do it, it became, like you said, very real to me. Yeah. Like, these other people ain't going to be, they, they're not my wife. They're not who I need. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not who God has assigned to me. Right. So I never did it. And then God came full circle and answered me and told me to go get your family together. Never said, if you go get your family together, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. It just said, he just said, go get your family together. And then once I did, then he started doing the rest. Uh, but it took work, and this is what we wanted everybody to understand in this book. It's not like you go, you say, okay, let, let's, let's get married, let's get married again. You know, you have a beautiful ceremony and everything is roses. No, there's going to be some work that you have to do to rectify um, what you've gone through, to um, rebuild trust, and, re- and to, to give each other. Those are all the things we talked about in the book. And it's important. I, I have this little phrase, divorce is never a we conversation. It is a me conversation, and that's mm. and that's important that people understand that when you when you are sitting down, you're making that decision by yourself. You're not talking to mm. people. You're not talking to your kids. You're not talking to your wife that you want to get out of your life. You're just talking to yourself. That's true. You're making these that's you're, true. you're making these decisions. I'm 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 tired of this. Tired of what? Who are you? Who are you bouncing this off of? Right. Besides your crazy behind. Right. <laughs> so divorce is never a we conversation. <laughs> It is a me right. conversation by yourself. So stop making decisions by yourself. Read this book. It'll help you. And more importantly, <laughs> if you think anything in life, marriage is a business. It, it is your number Why one is? small business that you will ever have in your life. You're an entrepreneur in this relationship. Put it in perspective here. You That's have so to true. work. You have to be part of the process. You have to get up and say, I got to put time in this marriage today. Because yeah. I'm a businessman. Yeah. I got to go to work. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Thank That's you for what... that perspective because there's, there's no days off. You, you don't get any sick leave. You don't get any any vacation days. It's a conscious decision that we have to make every day to learn how to, um, some part of that day, to learn how to feed your marriage and work and do things that's going to Build your marriage. It's an every day. And you know what? Quite honestly, sometimes it's an hour by hour thing. When someone is getting on your nerves <laughs> and, and you have an employee that is getting on your nerves, but you need a job done. And um, it's an hour by hour thing where sometimes you just have to take it moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, and say, what are we going to do? Pull back from the table. What are we going to do to build this relationship and not tear it apart? Because it, it, it's a covenant. Mm-hmm. It's more than just a contract. You find a good attorney, you can get out of a contract. Absolutely. But this is this is a this is a covenant. And it's a covenant made 
by God. So it's it's to be taken so much serious, so much more seriously than I think we even realize when we're at the altar. Um, this is something that is binding us together for the rest of our lives. So when you look at it that way, my husband always says, when you when you take divorce off the table and you look at it as this is to death do us part, your arguments are different. Your your the way you treat someone is different because you know that you don't want to be living all your life miserable. So you have to find a way to make these little things work so that you both can be happy. Um, neither, neither one of us are winning if we're just always arguing and always combative. Mm-hmm. Um, we're mm-hmm. just tearing down the entire relationship. You have to find a way to make it work, and that's going to take compromise. It's the most unselfish act um, being married is the most unselfish act in the world uh, because you're, you're always going to be tied to each other. So you always have to prioritize and pursue each other. Love it. You're exactly right. It, there's a quote in the book, marriage is all tied to the amount of work. Mm-hmm. And if you're not willing to put in the work, do not get married. If you're not willing to put in the work into your business, do not start a business. If you're not willing to put in work in the job that you're doing 40 hours a week, change jobs. You have to be committed to be successful. And marriage is a part of that process. Your family is part of your process. And family tied to making it number one, meaning that you prioritize the, the setup. Because if you if you got all the success in the world and you go home to a, a, a dysfunctional family, guess what? Your day is going to be dysfunctional. Your night's going to be dysfunctional. That's right. You're going to wake up dysfunctional. So sure. fix the family first. And I, and I promise you, the shift will be right. That's called a balanced life. That's what I preach on this show. Another thing I wanted to talk about on the show with you guys was talking on the phone, having time for each other. I know we got like three minutes left, but I wanted to bring that up because that's an issue that people have. You know, they 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 they, they talk when they see each other. You know, because the telephone is the new flowers to me. You know, send your wife flowers, send your girlfriend flowers, send your send your fiance flowers because you, you can you can communicate. Communication is so key because there's no excuses. Back in the old days, you know, you had, you had rotary dial telephone, then regular telephone. You couldn't drive. You, you, you go to work, then you talk. You could actually drive right. home and have a conversation. Use that as valuable yeah. communication time for your relationship, correct? That's what. That's exactly what we do. And, and we encourage all couples to find a way to um, give each other quality time. And for us, because we're both busy, what, we, what I vow is when I'm in my car and I'm driving, I could be driving an hour away. I could be driving three hours away. I call her and we talk the whole time I'm driving because that's uninterrupted time between you and your spouse. And and I don't I don't even click over. If somebody calls me, they text me or whatever. I answer those texts when I get where I'm going. But mm-hmm. that's time I spend with my wife. And there's been and plenty of times I drive. I, I'm on my way home. I talk to her. I get in the garage. <laughs> Right, and I right. come in the house and mm-hmm, it's good. Mm-hmm. Because when you see each other, you say, hey, how how you doing? How was your day? And that's it. Yes. As opposed to giving them time where you actually allow each other to talk out your ideas, talk about your plans, talk about what your dreams are, talk about how you feel. Mm-hmm. Those are things you can really talk through when you're on the phone in, in the car. This is amazing just hearing this, having this conversation. You got an you album that came out. I want to get this out. It came out, The Miracle Worker. We want to shout that out. Yeah. That, that came out last month. Uh, how's it doing? Uh, what, what's the expectations of that one after that tremendous success on the previous one? Man, it's doing great. You know what I found with this one? I wanted to go a little bit of a different direction. Mm-hmm. You deserve a lot of us to really have a great um, reach into Africa. So we recorded a few African songs, and it's funny, just one one of the songs we just released a video for uh, on Friday, it has like, in four days, it has like 500,000 views or something, like awesome. 400 something thousand views. Awesome. Because that that's how they consume music. So we wanted to release music in a way that would really appeal to the African continent and we and it's been really successful so far. Awesome. My man, I want to thank both of you guys for coming on my show. I uh, as you can see I've fallen in love with the the book, your brand. Yep. Again, uh this is your home. Trina is your home too. And I'm glad you oh, I'm glad you. you I'm glad you realize that I'm with you, girl. I'm with you, boy. <laughs> We, Thank you. We it, appreciate your support. And the support's for real.